game that they would prefer to play. And what they need to do now is really turn the tide. They need to make sure that they play that same game on Empire. They weren't able to do it in game number one. But if they're able to close out here, they could be sending themselves, uh, to, excuse me, they could be closing it out in the entire tournament in, here in our grand finals. All right, then, guys, so if you are joining us, we're moving into game number three. It's all tied up one to one Epsilon versus Supremacy in the grand finals. Remember, tweet the stream, let everyone know what's going on today. We've been showcasing some great maps and some great Halo for some great teams this moment in time. Tweet the stream. Remember to follow us at Halo and at HCS, our new account for everything officially Halo Esports. Twitch.tv forward slash Halo. Tweet the stream, let everyone know what's going on today. We know it's a bit early in some places, but everyone who's joined us today on Twitch, we thank you ever so much. Oh, yes, indeed. Now, as we see the players to watch for this match, Jimbo versus Ramirez. Uh, Jimbo, of course, a uh, player who we've seen him do nasty, nasty things uh, with just about every single weapon and especially the overshields and Ramirez of course a uh, vocal leader on his squad you see his team getting pumped up after game number one didn't pay off in game number two but now in game number three they're going back to Empire and they're looking to close this game out one of the things I got to say Sims you got to see a preview of the spectator mode uh, at the briefing on Tuesday fortunately we don't have that in this build this is a little bit of an older builder we're using here but uh, a, build, a build that a team uh, that the team worked on for E3 so we can't show any of that spectator mode here today but of course looking forward to showing that uh, a bit more of that uh, um, later on and also of course uh, we're only showing off two maps today in this preview but as we mentioned a little bit earlier in case you missed it we will have over 14 arena maps in Halo 5 Guardians when all is said and done so excited to see uh, of course tournament play uh, on, on all those maps in Halo 2 anniversary you know only working with three maps certainly was a challenge and I think now uh, for Halo 5 uh, having a, such a large map pool will be uh, pretty exciting and we're actually gonna have to make some serious decisions about which maps aren't played right well, we, just a quick one going back to the uh, the player versus player that we saw. It's kind of, when you look at that one, that's new blood versus old blood. You've got the new style of player, Jimbo, very, very fast, very, very twitchy. Came in Halo 4, loves a good FFA. We know how much damage he can do, but his shot is perfect. But then you look across to Ramirez, the knowledge, the map movement, the teamwork, the, the, how he can anchor as, as a team captain. And he'll want to push his team forward and get this second game. Because you know what? If they actually give up, or if Epsilon somehow managed to clutch up in game number three, we could be seeing a 3-1 here. If Epsilon come back and do some serious damage on Empire, they could be taking home the win. I mean, to be fair, we saw it earlier on, I mentioned it and I called it. Fathom is definitely, definitely, definitely the weak spot for Supremacy, and, and Epsilon know that. But then again, they're well, not going yeah, well, to go out with that fight. They need to, right, and Epsilon needs to steal this empire, right? They need to steal yeah. this game number three. You see, t take a look at our series here. Supremacy closing out 50 to 42 in game number one, and Fathom goes to the Epsilon 50 to 27, a commanding lead there. But if Epsilon can steal this empire win, and then I'll go ahead and win on Fathom, I think that's their best route for success. However, we could be going to a game five if Supremacy is able to put on that pressure and possibly even turn things around there on Fathom. But after we saw what was possible from Epsilon, I, I don't know if I see Supremacy taking uh, game number four if we go there. I think it's all, this next game is vitally important, especially for Supremacy. If Epsilon do take it, they're definitely going to take the Fathom, in my opinion. There's, it, it just seems to be their, you know, their Achilles heel, so to speak. And again, I'm not sure why. We saw that they've been practicing a little bit more, all the, all the nerdy jumps, so to speak, the gaps. We saw time, I mean, we actually saw Jimbo using that clamber up from bottom mid straight up to Sniper, which we haven't actually seen yet. But you know what, guys? We're kicking off game number three. People in the audience, make some noise for these two teams. It's grand finals time, game three, all tied up at one-to-one -one on board with Jimbo right now. Who's going to grab that first OS? I'm not into, I believe it was actually too foxy, but it got burnt instantly. Yeah, it did get burnt instantly. Might have been one of the Buck Twins who grabbed it as well, I believe was the case. So now Epsilon down to down by a few, as it looks like a great, great push there opening from Supremacy. I do apologize. It was actually Buck 20 who got taken down by two foxes. We see the score 3-1 right now. Riots with the, with the BR looking to catch another player off guard. Grenade goes down, looking for some hit markers. Decides to opt out and not bother moving forward as he looks across from, this is the fan area at this moment in time. I don't think he really knows where this player is. He jumps upon the sneaky. Yeah, looks like he has a little bit of help here, so he's not too worried, but he, he will pick up that headshot as well. But the one thing that Supremacy needs to do here is keep the pressure on Sims. They're up early by four kills. They need to make sure they're timing the next overshield, which will drop right around that 10.52 mark, um, which will be actually just shortly in a few seconds. I really don't think Riot's expected that. The player came back to haunt his dreams, but unfortunately, book 20, and that's if... Oh! the hatred and the dis... Oh, Ramirez 
Unfortunately, with the tee bag there, he did have the shotgun in the back pocket. He did not expect that to come out of nowhere. Unfortunately, as a player drops down, another one for Ramirez controlling that shotgun. This is a huge play for him. Jumps up and pops him through the window for the double kill. Ramirez on a rip tear right now, Bravo. And his teammate, Chalky, also has the overshield in hand. You see Ramirez checking the score and how many were dead there for just a moment. But look at Supremacy is up 12 to 3 on Empire once again, proving that this might just be their map. 13 to 4, a huge score gap, and again it's Chalky with the OS. A little bit of a poor grenade throw there, unfortunately, does take off his own OS, but that doesn't matter. He's got the SMG. If anybody is there, finds book 57, grenade goes in. That's a cracking grenade wow. from him. Two players, will he get a second? Yes, he does. In fact, he doesn't get the double. He was supported in the back by Ramirez there. He's Captain Andy as he looks for the second player. The third one's there. He managed to make it all the way across. I really like that maneuver. Jumps across, turned away, did go back for the kill. I think he believed he was actually weak as we move across now to Jimbo. That's right. We're going to have another overshield dropping in just a few seconds. So now we need to keep an eye on that. Of course, as you know, the players are waiting for that to drop as well. Now, taking a look across all screens should be coming up in just a moment. So we'll keep a very close eye on who might grab that. 76, 16 to 9 now the score. A little bit of a back and forth thing, but seven kill lead at the moment for Supremacy, showing just how dominant they are on this Empire map. And it looks like that was a burn there right around the late part of the nine, uh, the right there, the nine minute mark. So that will be a burn. We'll have to wait for that next overshield. But the score is still 11, 12 now to 18. And it looks like a little bit of a perfect kill there from Jimbo. Do you just love the sound of that? I it's do. so I rewarding do. every single time. Every and we have seen quite a few, both from Book 20 and Jimbo as well, just showing their individual gun skill. But you know what? Every single member of that team has gun skill themselves. They are down 20 to 13, unfortunately. That's quite a decent score gap, seven kills. But you know what? Supremacy can kind of just go on the offensive a little bit. They can just sit back and chill and, and, and kind of let Epsilon come to them. However, it really looks like they want the T-Tower set up. Yeah, of course, they want that, and they want to be able to grab this next overshield that will be dropping shortly. We're keeping another close eye on that to see exactly who might be grabbing that. But Jimbo still with shotgun in hand. 16 to 21, they are fighting back. I'm surprised they've gone for it as we see OS that was a, again. That's right, Chalky went for the burn there, so Epsilon Esports uh, able to shut down that Chalky grab, which is going to help them, because had Chalky gotten away with that overshield Sims, we could have seen a very different story, but look at the score. Epsilon now poised potentially to steal this game number three from Supremacy. Oh, Jimbo whips out the shotgun and shuts Riots down instantly. Grenade goes in, no hit markers though, moving forward. Looking to support Fox 20, which he does with perfect ability. Text Foxy down with that big shotgun. That weapon is such a huge power play weapon in both the maps we've seen every single time. Oh, it's massive, especially with the ways that you can now close the distance, whether you're using Sprint, Spartan, Charge, Thrust, right? You can get really into a player's face and take them down very quickly if you know how to use that shotgun, especially pairing it with the YY. He, I think he actually believes someone's here at the moment. He's just haunting around looking for another player as we find them over in blue base at the moment. That player did survive 22-23, only a one kill game now. Epsilon closing the gap. Cat and Jimbo seal the deal. Yes, he does. 23-23, 23-23. 25. Supremacy answer back with a few kills that we now see coming in. But oh. Riot charges down the OS and shuts him down. Yep. I believe that was Snipe Drone. He got destroyed. Yes, indeed. That was a perfectly timed Spartan charge. And he actually gets the assassination with it. So Supremacy will maintain that three kill lead. Of course, has Snipe Drone gotten away with that overshield that could have spelled disaster for Supremacy? But they hang on to the lead. It's great to see the players picking up the abilities and making use of the Spartan abilities. We've seen it time and time again. Riot seems to be using quite a lot. Not seen many from his uh, other teammates apart from the thruster. That is very, very game changing each time. Did he get that kill? Fine, Snipe Drone trying to go for a ground pass. The third time we've seen him try to do that over the course of his games. Maybe not the best scenarios. They do get cleaned up, but you are obviously very, very vulnerable when you're hovering in the air. There's Book 57 who comes. That was a super, super, super long distance shotgun there. He did take. However, Jim Bosse off the spawn. He goes down as well. 33, 30, uh, 33, 26 the score now, Bravo. Yeah, and this oh, next overshield is going to be huge. Expected to drop within 10 to 20 seconds or so. I think the players are now setting up for it, and it really could turn on the match. And now it is up. I think Chucky got... No, excuse me. I spoke too soon. I think Jimbo is going to get away with it. Yes, indeed. What a steal from Jimbo. I thought he was going to grab it as well, but he didn't manage it. He had the shotgun. Well, this is going to be a big kill from Jimbo if he gets that double kill and a quick beat. Can he get that on this triple at the moment? It's going to be Riot. Unfortunately, he has to reload, and Riot says no. Jumps out of the way, but comes back to shut him down with the AR as we now move across to Snipe Drone. 30 to 38. Once again, Supremacy just putting the pressure on Epsilon and extending that score gap. 31-39 now the score. Eight 
ridicule game. Six minutes remaining. Yes, Bravo. It's not over yet. I, you know, if you're a supremacy fan, you're, you're wishing that was the case, but Epsilon is still applying the pressure. They're only down by eight, and a team like Epsilon could come back in this if they maintain control of this and they grab the next overshield. You see, so far the overshields haven't been a huge factor just yet. Each team has shut them down throughout almost the entire match, but if a team can get the right amount of kills before that happens, then they can start to set up and come away with that overshield to use it as a push. Epsilon now only down by seven. You now see at the moment Supremacy hitting the 40-point 40, 40 club as we see Book 20 rushing down. He knows that OS is coming up any second, but he gets pushed back. And he does get the kill as his teammate Jimbo, I believe, comes in and steals it once again. No, I tell a lie, it's actually Snipe Drone. He thrust it in, pushed another player off. Look at this, look at the score gap. They bring it back 35 to 42 right now. Putting some shots on Foxy, hoping that one of his teammates plays it up. He finds himself a shotgun. What a present from the gods at this moment in time. He's got the OS, so he can do some damage. There's Ramirez trying to take his OS off. This could be an important play for Snipe Drone now. This could be game changing. He's in a perfect place. He has the players around him. He's got OS, so he's got a little bit of damage. There's the shotgun, finds one. I'm looking for the second player, he knows he's there. Teammate is with him as well, 39-43. Yet again, they've closed that gap. Here's, that's going to be Fox, he whips out the shotgun again. Snipe Drone is on a tear. Three kill game, four minutes, 45 remaining. And look at him using that thrust to get away from those grenades that are being thrown right before a player dies, right? He lands the shotgun and thrusts out of the way just to make sure he does not get hit by that grenade and stays alive. It's a two kill game, Sims. They have brought this back. Snipe Drone has done some work and they need to shut him down and they need to shut him down fast. Once again, taking control of that T1 section, which they did in previous matches. Tower seems to be the important thing. However, I have no idea what happened there. It was actually the, the player. Plasma caster came out of nowhere from Riots and shut him down. 57, wow. 43 to 44. 57 grabs the fresh OS. 420 on the clock at this moment in time. 44, 44. Neither of these teams want to lose this final match. Epsilon Esports using back-to-back -back over Jules to climb back in this match. I just said, I believe the score was 38 to 31, right? And now here we are tied up. Epsilon has brought the ba match back to a tie game and in control of the overshield. This is what I'm talking about. If you can get slaying control like this and then grab the overshield, that's the way to really rack up the score. You don't want to have those Slayer battles happen while the Overshield is dropping. Instead, get the kills first, time it perfectly, and grab the power up and push in. Take a look at this, 45-45. Snipe Drone actually cleaned up the kill, but you know what? 57 says, I've got an OS and I've got a shotgun. I'm going to make use of it. 47 to 45. They're bringing it to them. This shotgun is destroying Supremacy at the moment in time. 57 dropping down. He's kind of going to a position where he's in a bit of trouble, but he does have support from his teammates at the moment. Just guarding that bottom midsection with that shotgun. 46-48. Two players, though, Tracks in a corner, this could be bad if a grenade comes oh. in, there's one, can they get, yes they can, they take the glee by one kill, Supremacy need one more kill, Foxy's got the OS, can he grab the second kill, he's chasing his player, this is dangerous right now, two people chasing it, there's Jimbo, Jimbo's in trouble, two people, three people now coming in on the opposite side, and they somehow get it, oh, oh my dear. gosh, look at the players of Supremacy jumping up immediately, and somehow they closed that match out with the last second overshield grab. That was very, very, very bad plays there. Unfortunately, three people, Bravo, backed up into a corner on bottom mid. They set up for the OS, but they put themselves in a stupid position because the grenades come in. That position there and that setup cost them the game. They had a three kill lead. Three people died trying to go for the OS. Foxy gets it, cleans it up, and win the game. I was thinking the same thing. They didn't even need to be down there right on the overshot with the shotgun, right? That's what we saw from Buck 20 there as he was trying to make some plays happen. We saw Jimbo down there as well, but they come in and they sweep in with that last second overshill grab to Foxy, getting there, cleaning up those kills, and then pushing around the outside, being very strategic there with his teammates to pick up those last kills. So Supremacy hangs on somehow, despite incredible pressure from Epsilon in game number three. Epsilon just backing themselves into a corner, quite literally, as we saw two players, one went down, setting up for the OS just way too early, and they had no shields, there was no reason. I was surprised one member didn't say, you know, you're in front of me, get out of the way. The grenades came in, the hit markers were there, they threw a grenade. I'm not entirely sure if someone picked up a triple kill at the end, but three players went down in as many seconds. We then we, we then saw two Foxy just come in. There's three down. Hey.